All right, another week of no code news. Week 47, and we just come here every week to just focus on what's been going on in the news in the no code area. There will be some AI. All right, so N8N working with Microsoft 365 agents. It makes sense if they want to make it an enterprise and be accepted there. So it's neat. It just reminds me that the skills I'm building now in N8N, they're going to be around for a while. It also reminds me that N8N might be more for the engineering or enterprise level. And then you come down to active pieces, Zapier, or software for the more friendly or smaller company level that don't have tons of engineers that need to work on things. So yeah, interesting news there. The next article is 11 Labs. So 11 Labs, it's a funny one to put in the no code area. And I haven't had time to use this. And if I had a second me, I'd be using this every day to just create things and ideas and images and videos. So I'm looking forward to going here. And I can see 11 Labs with what they're doing. And there's so many of these like things coming together that could replace products like Figma can be replaced by Lovable. I think 11 Labs is becoming a platform to create media. And so it'd be interesting to see what comes out of this. It could be the next tool used for all this media. It's interesting how we try to learn new ways to do this stuff. So 11 Labs continues to grow integrations with Sora and other formatting updates and books, videos, podcasts. I have to just start using it. Hopefully by the next one, I'll be able to tell you I've used it. All right. So the next one is going to be our thesis. thesis. Okay. So I was stumbling upon some news about everybody's heard of all the the Google stuff coming out with anti-gravity. And some of it is very code centric with their ID and whatever, but it's still amazing. And I'll cover that later. But this one just, it just came across the radar to be like another way to do these type of user interfaces that are more than just chat without all the codes. There's a thing called Copilot Kit, which is an A agent UI or AG UI. So they're making this UI about agents or agentic UI. So you can chat with it. It can fill the screen up with charts and other information. And I, it's the same idea here. And it's an interesting concept as we start to figure out the paradigm and the format. So another good example, in my opinion, of how to build things quickly in a UI in a modern way, benefiting from AI, benefiting from no code or low code. All right, the next one is Zapier. So Zapier is, they're making a partner program. In the partner program, the reason I just bring this up is that we're learning how to no code. We're learning how to build in a way that can be scary because everybody's so used to coding and only coders make money. But we start to see these platforms like um, Zapier, uh, N8N, Softer, and all these other ones making these enterprise or partner programs. So you can start to see where you have a role or a job as a freelancer or whatever doing these things. So it's just a good reminder that these things are growing and they're out there. Back to more exciting things, or not more exciting, but more technically interesting. Active pieces. I still want to be doing more videos about active pieces, and I have a whole training I'll talk about in a moment. But again, it's an open source platform with a really good license, and there's just a lot of updates to their GitHub repo. So I'm just bringing that up there with Manus integrations and other things going on. So I will be hitting that soon. But it came across a news read, reel or whatever you call it, because of these updates. And if you really want to try a friendlier to use, free, open source, host it yourself solution, you can think about these guys. So the next one is Bubble.io. I don't talk, I don't even have a link for this one. Bubble.io has AI now doing more and more. Now they're integrating with cloud code, which makes sense. You could make an MCP for cloud code that works awesome with your service. So it seems like they pulled together an MCP that works really good with their service so it can put together the pieces. So anything these systems can do to help you build quicker is great. And Bubble might be pulling this off because the UI layer, I don't want to say it's the hardest layer, but because they have all these building blocks, they can plug them together with confidence versus like just building it fresh. And I think I talk about this every week. I'd rather build with pieces or components than build everything from scratch, which I think Lovable gets stuck doing. All right, so let's take a break. We're going to get into local LM news, but I just want to show an ad of what I'm planning for 2026. So hang in there, watch the ad, join the channel, and then after that ad, we'll come back. 
2026 is almost here and I want to show you four tracks that I'm going to be focusing on 2026. And by the end of that year, I just want you to get a sense of like how much you're going to learn how to have a self-hosted Linux box with all the AI, all the automations and no code we talk about all the time. But you're going to have your own. And at this point, you could put this in your customer's office. So they have private LLMs. We'll do live trainings. And you'll see in this timeline all the topics we're going to really cover here. So honestly, by the end of this track, by the end of 2026, you're going to just feel really confident doing this type of stuff. And it's not that hard. It just takes time learning and doing. The second track is just how do you build? And this one's going to adapt over the year, but by the end of the year, you're going to know how to build UIs and backends. You're going to really learn how to use Superbase as your core foundational backend for storage, for events. Events is going to be key to this. For WebSockets and more, you're going to use Active Pieces, N8N, whichever one works for us to then build solid solutions for customers, for businesses, for your office, whatever. By the end of that track, you're just going to understand how to build not just with AI, but with no code tools. And then of course, during the week, I'm just gonna keep an eye on what's trending and what's interesting to me. And I'll cover those topics as well. I have some ideas here, Kestra versus NADN, agents and active pieces, mail pit, and how you can use that for testing your agents outbox. So these are four tracks, 2026. It's gonna actually start next month. But if you join, you'll be in, you'll do the live lessons with me, you'll get more support and you'll help support the channel. All right, I hope this excites you. I hope you can see all the opportunity here for you to just learn and get comfortable with Linux, with building, with hosting your own AI, with no code tools and solving problems for yourself and for customers. Looking forward to 2026. Thank you. All right, thanks for watching and staying in here. Now for the local LLM news, Google Gemma. So. Google Gemma, these are just things going on. I, like I said, I'm not so much about AI, but running things locally, running open source models locally, creates a whole new avenue of work and buildable things. Private systems, home systems, office systems, private LLMs that then have amazing no code or chat or anything, dashboards. And I'd cover all that in that training you just saw that those tracks when you have models like Gemma that's like extreme low small model so it's neat to see this happening and again it's going to become a reminder that these LMs are going to be in so many places specialized for a particular task in the open source ones we just hold on to because if they ever get taken away at least we have these so yeah that's a cool one Gemma 3n with the 0.5 gigabyte RAM model really neat stuff and then we have a Quen 3 VL 30b thinking efficient multimodal AI so again, just more of this local private LLMs that you can run in multimodal means we could do text and images and you can run this in some of the, oh, LM Studio, which is the next news article and, and do some things locally for no expense besides your computer. You can run like image analysis or document scanning locally. It's really neat. Price wise, privacy wise. The next one is LM Studio. This is a graphical desktop tool to help you interact with the models that you have downloaded. It's like a chat system, but it has more than that and even serves the API so that you can connect to it from your local other stuff. So you can have it running on your computer or a computer in the office and you can point other things to it so that you can use this free, these local models, but integrate them into so many things, including N8N, active pieces. So here they are with some updates. They release Python and TypeScript SDKs, so you could integrate with it better if you want to code something. So yeah, just more stuff going on with them, really good stuff. Home automation and local LLMs. Again, I think this is gonna be a big area. This article just talks about more of the updates here in the space. I think, again, I have numerous offices asking me how to run this local, how to run this privately. And so these things all lead to that sense of experience for you as a builder. Complete website without code. These ones I usually shy away from, but I just wanted to surface Google Stitch. It's a nice way to get ideas for UI. I don't really believe you'll build anything with no code with AI coding. I do believe you can build with no code, but when you start coding with AI, unless you follow some really disciplined pat patterns, code equals complexity. So it's really hard to really keep it from just getting fragile. But anyways, Google Stitch, it really is a nice tool for generating UI and getting ideas. So you can then hand that to a tool or you can use that to then build your no-code build in software and get some insp inspiration from there. Uh, this is a fun one, N8N uh, GitHub repo with a bunch of workflows. They have this on their website, but this repo, I don't know if it's official or not, but this repo is there and it's just neat. A lot of workflows you can read through and play around with 
and then just get going with NADN more easily. But it is always tricky. NADN is intimidating. All right, so now what are some videos this week that caught my attention? First, let me remind you, please subscribe, please join, please comment. Help just me to know what's interesting to you or where you need more information. Join to support the channel. I think it's like under five bucks a month. And I'll have those two big tracks to really up your game in, in this upcoming year. But okay, videos that catch my attention, I just post them during the week to save them for this. Google's anti-gravity, a lot of people are talking about this. And this stuff is interesting. I think agents are key and Google has like the, the, they've created a standard, but they also have so much like Google Calendar, Google Email that you really see how important their data sources are. And if these agents can and can work with that and other things, it's just a lot of connecting the dots that they can do. So the Google anti-gravity IDE, it created a lot of news this week because of other things, but technically it just looks interesting. And I think they're trying to just think outside the box, even though it's like a, it is a fork of windsurf, but they are trying to maybe bring a new mindset to it. It is tricky right now. We're applying all our old mindsets to this new paradigm. Manus released a Chrome extension. Manus is a great tool, manusai.im, and they have a Chrome extension. Now, I haven't used it. I'm really looking forward to trying it. I just haven't had a need for it. I don't, I, I could do this more pro proactively, but sometimes I'm working and I just need the tool, so I'll try it during a work moment. Yeah, just plug it into your Chrome browser and you'll be ready to go. Langflow Crash Course. I usually don't talk about Lang anything because it's usually a bit more code heavy, but they have a lot of uh, examples here of it being just a place you can drag and drop stuff. So I'm like, oh crap, I didn't know about this. Lang Chain is the foundation of a lot of the N8N stuff. So obviously it's a proven technology. But yeah, this looked really good. Lang Flow Crash Course, build LLM apps without coding. Postgres and Lang Fuse setup. Yeah, I wonder how easy it is to get going. But yeah, it'd be interesting because I get so much out of FlowWise or Active Pieces or N8N that I'm never sure when I need a Lang based tool, even though some of those are based on Lang. All right, Google just made multi-agent AI easy. This one is a visual agent builder and it looks interesting. The more visual builders we have, we're learning and then they push the other builders to get better. So again, the more we can do with these type of drag and drop interfaces, the better, especially when you can save them and run them. And that, that's a big deal. No deploying, it's just working. What else we got here? We have, uh, this is a, so now, okay. This one is another video I like this week. And this guy I like to listen to, he has a lot of great videos on local, AI or GPUs and stuff like that. Fun stuff, really good stuff. So local AI GPUs, RAM, AGI predictions, and open source. He just goes down the list of what he thinks is going on and going to happen, especially with the industry and RAM and GPUs. So technically some really good stuff there. Massive world model release in AI agent action, Marble and Google Sima. Geesh. So <laughs> that's a lot of words. I don't know if that was the title of his video, but this guy, Theoretical Media, does a lot of videos that are really interesting on what's coming up with the multimedia side of this stuff. He brings a lot of the pieces together. Marble, in all of these things where they're making worlds out of prompts, it's just going to get better and better. Every year, every few months, we're seeing some improvement. So it's it just, I bring it here because like we're build as builders, we're building things, and people are going to ask for more and more as the hard gets easy, then the demands change. And so a customer goes from wanting a website that does X to a world that the customers can walk in and tour. Like I can name 10 other ideas in this area that I'm like waiting for either the industry to happen or to, so this is going to be something that we might find as a day-to-day -day thing we do in our career. How easy could it be to make a art exam you can walk through art exhibits or zoos or learning areas and they become experiences we can have both in the browser and in VR. So it's going to be interesting and it removes the restrictions we had before of generating assets. So I think it's going to open a whole new industry, honestly. All right. Now, again, this is my last section. It's GitHub trending. I only had one. I must have missed up on the prompt and I do reread all these and I remove a lot that were silly. But there is the trend radar, which I should be using. If you run this, it will start tracking all the trending news as a good list of things it looks for. Let me see if I can open that. And so it's a fun tool that you could run. I'll talk about how to run these things in my series because this is interesting. And if you translate it to English, which I can't do in this particular browser, it just talks about what it's doing for trending. So interesting stuff there. That is about it for the news. That was a lot, actually. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for making it this far. Remember, 
join the channel to support me monthly so I can keep doing this and do it more and more. And the learning tracks are gonna be just a big thing for you. I'm promising you they're gonna help you learn both how to build in this era and then how to do private LLMs and total systems with Coolify and other technology. So you'll end up after a year for 60 bucks having some of the most proven material I can just guarantee you. I do this all the time, okay? So please take a moment to join. If you don't wanna join or you can't, just at least subscribe, share, and comment. All right, thank you very much for uh, making it this far.